Hi Rosie friends, it's Julie and today I want to talk to you about um, something that I struggle with quite a bit and that is sleep. And sleep is something that has a huge impact on rosacea and it's something that I often feel is quite a bit out of my control but since a lack of sleep um, can lead me to have a lot more flare-ups and be a lot more sensitive to my triggers, um, I thought I would just share with you in case any of you struggle with sleep as well or you haven't made sleep a kind of a high priority in helping to treat your rosacea, I thought I would just talk about it a little bit and go over some of the things that I've been doing to try to be able to sleep more restfully or as much as I can and keep my symptoms under, under control because when I can sleep and when I can sleep regularly especially, um, that's when my skin has the it is has the smallest amount of redness, the smallest number of symptoms, it's the most comfortable, it's the least reactive. So um, I highly recommend getting a good night of sleep if you want to keep your rosacea symptoms under control. There are a lot of things that, as I said, I, I suffer from insomnia all the time, so I am far from being an expert on sleep, but I am somebody who knows what it is to struggle with sleep and therefore what it is that I can do to help to get as much sleep as possible. So if you can sleep really, really easily, that's awesome, then it's really working in your favor. If you don't sleep easily, like I don't sleep easily, then um, maybe some of these tips will help you a little bit. Hopefully. <laughs> they do help me. I know that I can't really say that I sleep great, but um, when I do, I think it's because I put a serious effort in. <laughs> the first thing that almost anybody will recommend to you if you want to sleep better is to try and keep to a regular schedule. I do. I try and go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time every single morning, weekends, weekdays. It doesn't matter. I set my alarm and I try to stick to that schedule um, because it really does help you to feel more sleepy at the time where you should be becoming restful so that you will fall asleep and it helps you to wake up a little bit more in the morning regardless of how much sleep you've had just because your body is used to that particular rhythm. I also um, believe in the idea of a sleep routine. Um, I don't mean that you know you have to spend exactly two minutes brushing your teeth and then you have to do I don't mean like a rigid, rigid routine like that but um, that there are certain things that you should repeat every day before going to bed just to kind of um, build it into your mind that we're preparing for sleep after this, you know, you can expect to lie down in the bed and fall asleep. So it's sort of almost just training your brain to expect certain things so that um, you've taught yourself that this is a winding down process and that sleep will be coming next. And it doesn't have to be anything complicated or anything like that, you know, um, maybe an hour before bedtime you turn off all screens so that you don't have that blue light exposure. Um, you might do something quiet like read or meditate or just something like that. Um, you might take a bath or shower, brush your teeth, do your cleansing and moisturizing and everything routine, get into your pajamas, that whole thing. So um, I feel that a bedtime routine should be about an hour long. Um, I don't mean that you're specifically getting ready for bed for an hour, but um, just that you do start to do your winding down things and you start to become calm. Even dimming the lights can have an impact because it can help to stimulate melatonin production in your brain and melatonin is really important for helping you to fall asleep. It's a part of that circadian rhythm. Um, I do drink coffee in the morning. I try to get off caffeine altogether, but I just really enjoy caffeinated coffee and there are, I haven't found a decaf that I really, really enjoy. So um, I drink caffeine, but I stop doing that at around one o'clock in the afternoon. I try to give myself a good solid half day without any caffeine to, like, or any other kind of stimulant. I don't drink energy drinks at all. Um, I try to get all that out of my system by the time it's bedtime because my rhythm <laughs> is thrown off a lot of the time regardless of how much I stick to a schedule and things like that. I also do a whole pile of other things to create kind of almost an environment that's um, appropriate for sleep. So I do things like turn down the heat in my home in the winter time and I turn up the air conditioning a little bit in the, the heat of the summer because um, I find that a warm bed but a cool home is a much more comfortable way to sleep. I find if I'm overheated I'm much less likely to sleep than I am if I'm slightly on the cool side. Being overheated will wake me up at night but I won't wake up cold. So I find you know 
turning down the heat, wearing um, pajamas or whatever that are appropriate to the right body temperature. I usually go on the light side and then pile on the blankets because I can move blankets, but I don't want to have to actually change my outfit mid-sleep. <laughs> and on the subject of being sort of cool before and like at bedtime, also I tend to um, shower at the end of the night because I use things like lavender shampoo and lavender pro um, natural lavender products, not lavender scented, but things that actually have lavender extract in them. And those uh, lavender is a very, very calming scent, so I try to use that kind of product, which means that showering at night really works for me. And while I do enjoy a warm shower or a warm bath, um, and that's warm, not hot, because otherwise a hot shower will flare up my cheeks, but um, Although I do enjoy that, I do for the last 30 seconds crank the, the uh, temperature down to cool. Um, I know you're supposed to make it ice cold for that last 30 seconds if you really want to stimulate your immune system. I personally can't stand that in the wintertime. It's just too cold, so I just turn it down to quite cool, slightly less than lukewarm, um, so that it feels chilly. And then, you know, I just finish up rinsing off everything and then um, get out and dry off really quickly because if I'm actually cold like that when I get into bed I warm up and then go to sleep so um, that may sound weird but it's actually really effective I found that like taking a shower at night not only helps with the kind of aromatherapy side of things but it also helps with the regulation of body temperature in a really effective way so that I've just kind of help to relax myself and prepare myself for sleeping. Um, and that also feeds into the whole routine, uh, bedtime routine, because I've made basically showering and then brushing my teeth and doing my moisturizing and all that kind of stuff, a part of the whole routine, and then I just go to bed. So um, it all works in very, very nicely into the same sort of telling my brain, it's time to wind down now, it's time to sleep. If I'm having a day where I find that I'm, I know that um, I should be starting to feel tired and I'm not. Um, there are a few teas that I find work really really nicely not only with um, winding down and feeling calm and f um, becoming restful but also that work really nicely with my skin as well. Um, and the two teas that I like are chamomile and hibiscus tea. I like hibiscus more than chamomile. I can, for whatever reason, I have a really off and on relationship with chamomile um, and there are times when I find that that really soothes me and I feel like sleeping, and there are times when I find that that makes me sleep but I wake up feeling kind of groggy and a little bit messed up. So um, when I don't really feel like testing the waters <laughs> with chamomile a little bit, I like to go with hibiscus tea. I just find that really calming and soothing. I really enjoy the flavor. So if you haven't tried that before, it might be worth testing out just to see how you like it because I just, I find it to be a very soothing one to drink in the evening. I know there are lavender teas as well, but I really don't enjoy the taste of lavender. I like the smell, I find it very calming, but the taste of it is very, it's off-putting to me. I really don't like it. In the wintertime, another thing that I found was, is really good um, overnight is running a humidifier in my bedroom. I just have a little one and it's a cool mist humidifier. Um, I don't use the warm ones, but those are the ones that are meant for a really short term if you have a cold and things like that. Using a warm water humidifier is basically a fast route to getting mold in your home. So I use a cool mist one just to bring the humidity up because it's crazy dry in my place during the winter time and I found that that makes a huge difference in my ability to sleep comfortably, um, in my ability to breathe comfortably while I'm sleeping, and my skin isn't nearly as dry when I wake up in the morning, so I find that makes a huge difference. I really love my humidifier. If you haven't tried that out and it is dry where you live, you might want to try and pop one of those on because it makes a really big difference. It's a surprising difference actually. In terms of supplements and you know sleep medications and stuff like that, I've never tried a prescription sleep drug. Um, I don't want to go that route at all. I do have insomnia and they have been offered to me, but I just, I'm really not interested in that. I would have to be very, very desperate for sleep to actually get to that point. I was sent this, uh, this product here, it was just sent to me in my um, P.O. box and it's t extra strength Tylenol nighttime. It took me forever to um, actually try this out because I read the um, kind of directions and everything about it really, really carefully and it says specifically that it is meant for use if you have pain and if you can't sleep. You have to have both of those things. It's, it says not to use it if you have pain but you're sleeping fine or if you're sleepless but you're not suffering from pain. So I, I have no idea why this was sent to me but then I could finally try it because I hurt my shoulder not too too long ago and it was really aching while I was trying to sleep and so I thought okay you know I give in I'm gonna try that and 
Um, so I did test this out and I slept. <laughs> I didn't want to and I even was kind of nervous about it. You're supposed to take two of them and I only took half of that. Um, and I slept like a baby both nights <laughs> I used it. And I was not groggy in the morning. I was expecting to be groggy. Um, the ingredients in it are acetaminophen and diphenhydramine hydrochloride. Um, acetaminophen is a painkiller. It's like what Tylenol is, just when you buy regular Tylenol. And the diphenhydramine hydrochloride is, I believe, an antihistamine. It's one of the more common antihistamines that you can just get in the drugstore, but it also happens to have the side effect of being um, somewhat, ha having some sedative properties. So those things combined are actually really commonplace. Um, this didn't seem like a very a super unique product, but I was really, really glad to have it um, for the two pills, which was supposed to be one dose, but I stretched it out to two um, when I hurt my shoulder. That said, I probably wouldn't buy it again because I don't like relying on that kind of thing. And I feel very nervous that I could form a dependency on it. And I sleep, I have enough sleep struggles that I don't need to become dependent on something to help me to sleep. Um, if I do find that I haven't been able to sleep well at all for several nights, so maybe I go two or three nights with one or two hours of sleep per night, um, I do have a basically drugstore brand supplement that I use. Um, I, I don't have it here, but I mean, it's, it's just a drugstore brand one. I think you can get it in Jameson as well and a couple of other things. It's, it's some really common ingredients that you find in virtually every sleep supplement. Uh, valerian root, um, passion flower, hops, it may have chamomile in it. In fact, I think that it does. Um, it does not have melatonin in it. I'm not ready to try that yet. I've read a lot of studies on melatonin and you can mess that up really easily, even through supplementation. And there are a lot of different kinds of problems that can form by using melatonin supplements wrong. So I'm not gonna go that route unless I desperately have to. And I want guidance from my doctor if I'm gonna go in that direction. But um, in terms of just using the supplement that has um, the herbal supplement that I have that I just finished listing off the ingredients for it, um, that's, it doesn't have a sedative in it, but it, I do find that it relaxes my body a little bit. It relaxes my mind. My main problem stopping me from sleep is an overactive mind. So it just helps to take the kind of edge off, if you want to say that. And it helps me to sleep a little bit better and then I can get back into my own routine and rhythm. I'll use that for maybe up to two nights in a row. Um, I try not to use that very much at all because I do find that it's better to try and find your own rhythm for sleep um, through your own methods of the right routine, staying away from st stimulants and all those other things that I said earlier. So I will use a supplement if I absolutely have to, but most of the time I'm just trying to kind of get it under control myself and calm my own anxieties, um, become restful, try and become peaceful at night and then soothe myself to sleep. <laughs> So yeah, and when I do get sleep, my skin is way, way, way better than it is when I have been restless and when I have been sleepless. So um, because I do have insomnia a lot, um, I can definitely tell the difference in my skin. So I can tell you that your sleep will make a very big difference in the state of your rosacea symptoms. So if you haven't um, been able to figure out exactly why your skin is as reactive as it is, and you also struggle with sleep, you might want to consider doing something focusing on replacing your sleep because um, that could be actually what's standing in your way. That could be the main barrier that has been stopping you from being able to get everything back under control again in terms of your symptoms. You could be doing absolutely everything right, but if you're not sleeping, your skin will still be reactive because when you don't get sleep, um, there's more inflammation in your body, you're more likely to be stressed out because of the cortisol that's, uh, levels that are higher in your body, that's the stress hormone. Um, you don't eat as well when you don't sleep because you crave things that are sweet or fatty or salty. And it just, you slowly kind of, it just eats away at the overall health of your body. So by replacing that sleep and bringing down the inflammation and getting your stress and your eating under control, then you can see that in your face. You can actually improve your skin quality and your skin health and get your rosacea symptoms down. Yep, so if you have been struggling with sleep or if you haven't made sleep a priority, maybe um, that should become a part of your kind of rosacea busting routine and your rosacea busting lifestyle and it'll make a difference for you. But yeah, so I hope that this kind of long babble <laughs> about um, sleep and rosacea and the things that I do to try and improve my sleep was helpful to you and interesting to you. And 
If you did like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this one, or where I try out products, or where I try to cover it with my, my rosacea with makeup, then I hope you'll subscribe to my channel because I make new videos every Sunday and Thursday. And other than that, I will see you next time.